Okay, this is Mel with Five Star. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to properly check the ring gap clearance, okay? So the rings, uh, like these pistons are from SPT because this customer sent in this cylinder and it was already one millimeter over. So we ordered some SPT cells, 1.5 millimeter over. Uh, don't normally use them uh, with the right with a one and a half over in standard bore, but anyways, they're the only ones that seem to be carrying these. So the rings are are uh, from a, are their own rings, and um, sometimes their their ring gaps are tight on them. So on the SPT pistons, uh, I haven't really noticed it much on the Rick rings uh, from Japan, but uh, sometimes you get a set that is. But anyway, so we've got one set already done here and how I do it is I put put the ring in and I'll push the piston down so I'm so I can make the ring be even so that's why I use the piston now this one is supposed to be 12 thousandths plus or minus four thousandths so uh you know it could be as small as eight or up to 16 according to uh the uh SPT uh recommendations anyway so this one I've already this one I haven't filed. It was that one I filed. So this one is really tight. Uh, the 12 isn't going in there. I can barely see a gap right there. If you look, it just looks like a hairline, hairline gap in there. So we're going to go ahead and file that. Now what I'm going to use is just a fine file. And uh, so I'll take the, the ring, set that on there like that. And I'll file, I'll file the... the um, ring I'm kind of rocking it like this and like that so that I, I don't create like a, a sharp spot on it I'm rocking it on a little bit this one's pretty tight so I'm gonna go for quite a bit here we'll double check it put it back in push the piston down Tuck our gap. That one's really, really close to 12 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up just a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a 12. So we did that side that time. Now we're gonna take a little bit off of this side. Pretty close there. Just to center it. You no, know, it's a little tight in the very back there. Just gonna go a tiny bit more. Put it on there. Should be good. We're gonna say these these two are good. I've already checked the other one. I'm just gonna do one more set real quick. We're just gonna use the same cylinder every time because they're all bored the same. So um, I'm gonna put this one in here. Let me just rotate that so it's a better view for you guys. Let me see that gap. It's uh, tight again. So let's go for it again.
very important to do this. If you don't do this, when the when the when the piston and the cylinder gets hot. There, that's a nice one right there. Okay. When the piston and the cylinder gets hot, it will expand the ring and jam up on there and burn it down. So don't assume that they're good. That one's tight. Sets, one more set. Oh, that one's tight as can be right there. Can't even see any kind of almost a gap on that. Good, okay. One more. Definitely better. This is one case where it's definitely better to be a little loose than too tight. So this one is super tight also. This one already? I don't think so. Can't remember. Let's just check real quick. Yep, that one's done. Okay, that's how you do ring and gaps. And then on these pistons, um, you know, we would oil the grooves here, and then um, the, the the lettering on the on Yamaha's goes up. So you just put the piston, the ring on like that kind of roll it around same thing on the other side the the bevel then like right there drop it in next to that pin slot right there and you go around it like that and that's it you do all three of them and we'll load all these up and we'll actually put them in the cylinder for the customer and so that if they're ready to install when he gets something Anyways, if this video has been helpful to you, please uh, like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps us out a lot. And thanks for watching. Bye.